As expected, Rome's homosexual agenda has been ramping up lately. Check this out. Switzerland votes overwhelmingly to jail citizens for homophobia or transphobia. And the article goes on to say that by an almost two to one vote met with ringing approval by pro-LGBT groups, the National Council of Switzerland voted this month on a measure to criminalize homophobia and discrimination. The country's criminal code currently bans incitement to hatred or discrimination against a person or group of persons on the basis of their racial, ethnic, or religious affiliation, the paper explains. And they go on to say that this is punishable by a fine or up to three years in prison. Raynard's proposal would add sexual orientation and gender identity to that list. Now, keep in mind that the word homophobia is based on a lie just as the word abortion is based on a lie. And what I mean is they change the truth about what's going on to water it down a little bit so as to make it less shocking. Abortion really means you're killing your child. And homophobia means, according to them, Christians are scared of homosexuals when in fact we are not. We love them enough to tell them the truth and that angers those in power and so they pass laws to try to shut us up. The only reason this is happening is because the Vatican is a political giant that has nearly 150 nations in bed with it and it is right now flexing its power over them thanks to 123 of those nations having officially signed onto the Rome Statute of the International Court System. But how does one make the connection between homosexual laws with the Pope in Rome? Well, 98% of the prelates that work in government positions inside Vatican City are in fact homosexual. And so it doesn't take a brain surgeon to see that when a nation that is literally run by homosexuals in every office of its government, which, as prophecy predicted, has become so powerful that even the United States presidents must meet with the Pope after every election, one has to realize that homosexuality will be normalized by that political giant. That means now that the fix is in via an international criminal court where they got the power, any nation that is under that global court system is expected to pass laws just as Canada did in 2003 about any Christian that approaches a homosexual can get five years in jail or $5,000 fine or America has gone after Christians under its first homosexual president, Barack Hussein Obama, and now Switzerland just passed laws that states any Christian that uses the Bible to share a loving warning about the dangers of homosexuality, which, by the way, is declared an abomination in the Bible in many areas, including the New Testament, that Christian will be jailed for up to three years. You know, back in February of 2004, the Lord moved me to write a newsletter regarding the Vatican's homosexual agenda, where the end result would be a global normalization of homosexuality, as well as the removal of free speech, wherein anyone speaking against them would be punished. Once this goes global, and it will, any speech they deem offensive will be illegal, and one can rest assured anyone using a Bible to prove the Pope and his prelates are evil will be jailed and killed. And as a sovereign nation... They can do as they please with those they deem a threat. And this is besides the fact that the evidence was made public that during the AIDS crisis, Catholic priests were dying of AIDS 11 times greater than anyone else. Scientists literally had to do the math on this for the same reason they did it to find typhoid Mary back in her day. I mean, you need to find the source to help curb it, or it can kill billions, right? I mean, all they needed to do was to backtrack the way the disease spread and where the disease is most concentrated. Well, that's the obvious starting point. A 12-year-old child with a calculator could figure this out if the data was handed him. It's not rocket science, and Rome knew it. And so they tried to scare the people into shutting up once the facts came out about the priesthood. What most people fail to see is that prophecy is clear about Rome's next step. And so the Pope will have to do all he can to make himself look good. In fact, Rome insisted back in September of 2009 that the Pope was a global figure with a huge moral authority, and many poor souls believed it. The Pope knows he cannot be the one that steps up to demand people that use Bibles to warn homosexuals of danger should be persecuted in jail, because in so doing, it would openly declare their hypocrisy because they claim homosexuality is a sin, in one breath, yet embrace it to the point of owning and operating homosexual bathhouses in Rome. So again, the pawn is needed here. 
And for those of you that don't think they are able to commit the sin and then act like they're innocent, are you aware that the Roman Catholic hospitals abort babies on a daily basis? I mean, just as they hide the truth about their pagan and homosexual ways to allow them to come off as moral, they know if the truth went mainstream about their daily abortions, it would endanger their political foot in the door, which, as we know, is literally based mostly on abortion. That's how they got in there. And so as prophesied, the man of sin in Rome not only uses dark sentences as the prophet Daniel predicted in Daniel 8.23, which we today call craftiness, and he does this to hide his agenda, he also uses the many political pawns he has in all the highest offices of at least 123 nations to go forth to normalize sin in all its hellish glory for the dying God he has recently been exposed, worshiping right out in the open. Thank you for watching. God bless.